Hey everybody, welcome back to the sketch adventure. On today's episode, we're going to be studying the eyes, the last facial feature of the series. After this, I'm going to be doing a video or two on the complete portrait, and then I'll probably be moving on to composition. As you can see, I'm no longer using a pencil to block in the painting. I found that by using the brush, I end up being more thoughtful about how I create my initial blocking. My first step in every painting is to block in the dark tones, whether they be the shadow shapes or the shapes of the dark local colors. After I've roughed this in, I immediately start adding different yellow and red tones around the structure of the eye, placing the most importance on how I'll build up the values. The values, as I've mentioned previously, are responsible for the majority of the painting's credibility. Once I establish the darks of a painting, I want to create a transition from the dark shapes over to the lights. This progression from light to dark is one of the key factors in creating a sense of form. Oftentimes I'll see drawings and paintings that fail to create believable form because they didn't make their darks dark enough. Just like my video on painting lips, I want to quickly show the clip of this cast rotating so that you can take a moment to observe just how much form and volume these eyes actually have. These are stylized eyes, but nonetheless they're designed in a way to help communicate the structures of the eye. As I start on the second eye painting, I'd like to address something about the nature of my videos. I intend for these videos to be mostly demonstrations while I talk about my thought process, and on top of that a little bit of theory. There's such an abundance of information online now that I don't think I'd be adding anything too useful if I were to make my videos heavy on theory. In general, I feel like it's more valuable to paint rather than to study theory. I think some is okay, but many people fall into a trap where they start replacing experiential knowledge with book knowledge, and so much of growing as an artist comes from learning through failure. Speaking of which, I didn't realize how strong the yellow mixture on my brush was, and rather than testing it by making a small mark, I decided to scrub in a general tone around the eye. By mixing a lighter brown with a bit of water, I was able to create a more transparent layer over top, which ended up creating a harmony again with what I had painted. As I work, I'm still thinking about the dark to light transitions. This time the shadows aren't as dark, so I either need to go lighter with the lights or keep the transitions in a tighter value range. Regardless of which I choose, I must always keep the darks and lights distinct in order for the painting to make visual sense. It's always a bit worrisome when I put down lighter values, because until they dry it looks like I've overshot the value by a mile. This is one of the many things about gouache that keeps me on my toes. Even though I've switched over to oils, my thought process is exactly the same. Only now I can breathe a sigh of relief if I mess up my shapes, colors, or edges, because with oils they'll stay wet long enough for me to change it. Every time I paint, I have no idea how it's going to go, mostly due to the fact that I experiment a little every time I sit down. The most important tool, however, is to be able to recognize when something's not quite right, and then to be able to make the necessary changes to fix it. To be able to recognize your own errors is a really valuable skill, especially if you don't have a teacher. And sometimes, if something doesn't feel right but I can't figure out what it is, I'll either walk away for a few minutes or continue on, experimenting until a more tangible solution appears. Of course, I've ruined many sketches and paintings this way, but one of my goals as an artist is to be brave when I paint and try not to fear the outcome of a misplaced stroke. With this painting, I'm experimenting to see what it will look like when I use more saturated colors than normal. I want to see if I can start to build the lower eyelid structure with a dark red rather than a brown like I would have used. I also want to break up my edges. In the upper lid specifically, I don't like the way it looks if the whole thing remains sharp. It tends to flatten it out. One of the last things I do is lighten the portion above the eye so it properly shows that it's sticking out. And then I do end up desaturating that intense orange skin tone just a little. And lastly, I'll add that ever satisfying highlight in the eye. So as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And stick around for the complete portrait next episode.